So how are you, you know, making sure that you have enough time, I guess, to, to apply all of these lessons? Because sometimes like building a habit takes, you know, at least three weeks, right? So, so what is your process to apply these lessons? So what I like to say is like, if you could pick out like two or even three things from the book, like that, that that's a win. Because yeah, nonfiction books are like just packed with so much knowledge and information. It could take you like, you know, a whole year to, to apply everything that you learned from it. Right. So you really just pick out the two or three most important lessons from it, figure out how you could apply it to your life. And then you, you just got to, you know, start working on it. So whether it's like a communication book or like social book that talks about a recent tip was like whenever you think of someone in a positive manner, you want to email them or text them right away. So right. I'm like, okay, for this okay. week, I put in my notes that, you know, whenever I have like a positive thought or something, I just want to DM them or send it to them. Uh, so that's like my habit or like activity for that week. Mm. So I kind of just pick one important a habit or action you want to do and just set that as like your goal for the week. And then if you do that every single week, that's 52 habits in a year. And wow. like that's that that could be like a massive change to someone. Um, oh, so yeah. yeah, I would focus on, you know, don't try to apply everything at once because that's just way overwhelming. It's like too much. If you just pick one week and you do that and you do that every week for a year, like that'll be an incredible uh, transformation. Right. So you're saying you're picking a different action or habit each week to apply? Yeah, one week it'll be like, um, you know, I read about um, s- some of the benefits of doing like a caffeine detox. So I did no caffeine for a week. Mm-hmm. Then I read about, uh, you know, going gluten free. So I went gluten free for a week. Or like um, Huberman talks about, you know, get sunlight in your eyes every morning. So like I did that for a week. And then if I like really like the habit, then I'll like add it to, to my life or it becomes like a part of my life. Yeah. Everything from like, you know, flossing to, you know, yeah, sending nice texts to people. And then those habits just become part of your life. And then you don't have to like think about doing it. It just becomes, like process. It's like a giant human experiment. I love it. it it's yeah. <laughs> that's so great. You're just like optimizing yourself and your life. Yeah. I guess you've must have tried so many things by now. Like what would be the most impactful? Like the top three that you're like, oh, these have stuck and I recommend it to everyone. I think the first one, uh, so from that book, Why We Sleep by Matthew Walker, like there's just the importance of getting, you know, eight hours of sleep consistently. Uh, that's a complete game changer. Like you could have a bad diet, you could not exercise, uh, but if you're not, if you're getting your sleep, like you'll still be like like a high performer. So that's definitely been one. Two, before I uh, injured my knee, I would go like uh, jogging every morning. That way, I could like get sunlight and also exercise. Um, so that, that was like a two for one. So yeah, try, try and exercise in the morning or just try and go outside every morning uh, has been like huge on like my mental health and just like overall mood booster. And then three, I, I guess, would be like my reading habit. So mm-hmm. either reading early in the morning or late before bed, that's like really stuck with me. And um, yeah, like the more books I read, the more I learned, the more I learned, the better person I became. Uh, yeah. So I think those are three uh, habits everyone should have. Yeah, this is very inspiring. I'm sure people already are like, oh, I have to read. I have to read more. <laughs> yeah, um, that's the goal. Make reading uh, cool again. Exactly. Well, how long are you reading in your reading sessions? Like, do you give yourself like a time limit or do you just let yourself go wild? Like, however long I feel. Yeah. Uh, so I would say I still follow like the two minute rule. Okay. So if I just sit down and read for two minutes, I, I consider that an accomplishment, like a win. Nice. Because uh, some days are busier than others. But sometimes like uh, literally like last week, I was like, okay, you know, it's kind of late. I'm just going to sit down and read for two minutes. And then I ended up reading for like an hour and a half because the book was like so good. Mm-hmm. So it definitely varies. It could be, you know, as little as like 15 or 20 minutes a day to sometimes like uh, yeah, earlier this week, I think I spent like three or four hours reading. Wow. Um, wow. Yeah. So it really just depends on like the book. Um, but yeah, I would say, you know, just tell yourself, I'm just going to sit down and read for two minutes and you never know how long you might end up reading. <laughs> 